every living bird has a beak, and whether they are being used for foraging, killing, or attracting a mate, their bill is paramount for their survival. However, this definitely wasn't always the case, and many millions of years ago, nearly all of them had a row of sharp teeth instead. However, strangely, birds didn't just have teeth at some point, and actually, they had teeth for a large part of their existence. Whereas their other defining features, like their feathers and wings, have been around since the beginning, their bill is not as important to what it means to be a bird as much as you might think, as they got on fine without them for an incredibly long time. So why do all birds that are alive today have a beak? The earliest bird known to have existed is difficult to pin down, because due to the transitional nature of evolution, it is difficult to draw a line between a particular group of animals and the group of animals they descended from. The definition of a bird is not to do with their beak or their feathers, and actually they are defined by whether they can fly, or more accurately, if they descended from flying ancestors. The definition of a bird is literally a flying dinosaur. However, this definition doesn't necessarily make the job of finding the first bird any easier, because some scientists believed that flight may have evolved multiple times among dinosaurs, and that birds are the descendant of one of these lineages. And an even smaller group of scientists even think that some dinosaurs, like raptors for instance, may actually just be birds, but they have evolved back into being flightless. However, the least controversial contender for the earliest bird in the fossil record is Archaeopteryx, that lived about 150 million years ago in the Jurassic period. Archaeopteryx was a classical transitional animal, sharing multiple features from both birds and dinosaurs. However, its skull was very dinosaur-like, and it definitely did not possess a beak, instead having many small sharp teeth. The earliest bird in the fossil record to lose its teeth is slightly confusing, because birds seem to have evolved to do this on multiple occasions. The earliest beaked bird was called Confuciornis, that was known from about 120 million years ago. But Confuciornis' beak wasn't the same beak that would be inherited by modern birds. One of the closest relatives of modern birds that didn't survive into the present, going extinct at the same time as the non-avian dinosaurs around 66 million years ago, were a group of Cretaceous birds called the Hesperorniths. Hesperorniths were largely aquatic and flightless, most likely living in a similar way to penguins swimming the oceans having a diet of fish. But more importantly, they did not have beaks and had teeth. But Confucianus was much more distantly related to modern birds, but was beaked, meaning its beak must represent another lineage that evolved a beak on a separate occasion convergently. However, we know that modern birds would have evolved to lose their teeth around the same time, because all birds have a gene that deactivates the formation of teeth that can be traced back to a common ancestor around 100 million years ago. Genetic studies also show that birds evolve to lose their teeth and develop a beak at the same time, forming from the front to the back of their jaws. And there are even some prehistoric birds that show this transition, like Ichthyornis, that had a sharp beak on the front but had teeth at the back of its jaw. All of the fossils of Archaeopteryx have been discovered in Germany, and during the late Jurassic and the Cretaceous, Germany and the rest of Europe was a tropical archipelago, most likely similar to Indonesia and it seems that Archaeopteryx was largely confined to just a few European islands. But this wasn't the same story of all of these primitive toothed birds, and there were other groups that saw widespread success. The first group of birds that saw success comparable to the level of modern bird families were a group called the Enantiorniths, that first appeared about 130 million years ago in the early Cretaceous period, and have been found on every continent except Antarctica being the earliest birds known to have a global distribution. Unlike Archaeopteryx, the Enantioniths had lost their tails and other more dinosaur-like features to the point where they had an overall appearance very similar to modern birds, and from a distance most likely would have been mistaken for one. However, almost all of them retained one or two claws on their wings, and all of them did not have a beak, instead having a fleshy mouth filled with small teeth. So the earliest beaked birds in the fossil record date back to around 120 million years ago, but toothed birds had already become incredibly prevalent throughout much of the world before this, and remained successful after it. So why did birds all come to have beaks? Before many prehistoric birds were known about, it was thought that a bird's beak was integral to its ability to fly, and that birds with teeth would be too heavy to take to the air, 
This is now known to be false because there are many species and whole families of toothed birds known to have flown. However, it didn't stop them from flying, but lightening their load could have helped them improve their flight capabilities, as this would match other parts of birds' bodies that have seen drastic evolutionary changes to shed weight. And teeth specifically have unique properties that make them especially heavy. Teeth have to be much tougher than other bones because they are being smashed together all day, and so are covered in heavy enamel, and they are made of multiple parts, so they couldn't simply be hollowed out to save weight like their bones. But beaks are made out of keratin, the same material your fingernails are made out of, which has a great strength to weight ratio. Even birds like toucans that have massive beaks don't weigh very much at all. And there is evidence for this in the fossil record. Confucianus wasn't just the first beaked bird in the fossil record, but also it was a fantastic flyer. Confucianus still had some primitive features like claws, but analysis of its skeleton showed that it was much more advanced in its flight capabilities than many birds living at the same time, although maybe not quite as powerful as modern birds. So this supports the idea of birds evolving to lose their teeth to shed weight if the first beaked bird had also made adaptations become more agile in the air. This trend was also seen in a completely different group of flying animals, the pterosaurs. The earliest pterosaurs in the fossil record were known as the rampharynchoids, that first appeared around 220 to 230 million years ago, in the Triassic period. The rampharynchoids had teeth, but also, at least the majority of them, were probably not very good at flying. They had tails, and most of them had very short and fat wings, that were an undesirable shape for elegant flight. However, over time, a new group of pterosaurs named pterodactyloids would start to gain prominence, that had long and thin shaped wings, well developed for effortless soaring, and the vast majority of them evolved to have beaks. However, although shedding weight was almost certainly part of the reason why birds adapted to lose their teeth, it doesn't explain why they are the only major group of animals that are entirely beaked. While birds may also owe their beaks to the way they produce their young, the formation of teeth may have limited the speed of embryo growth in dinosaurs and birds with teeth while developing inside eggs. It was thought that data on dinosaur incubation periods may have been inaccessible, and it was sometimes assumed that dinosaurs would have similar incubation periods to modern birds, adjusting for the difference in size. However, it is possible to date the age of eggs by the growth rings in the teeth of the embryos, and some species of dinosaurs, like Protoceratops, have many eggs that have survived the fossilization process, many of which are in different stages in development, meaning that estimations of incubation period can be given for some species of dinosaur. And it was found that dinosaurs' embryonic growth rates were actually much longer than those of birds, being more similar to lizards, which have long incubation periods. Incubation time is very important to the evolution of egg-laying animals, Fast incubation reduces the risks of eggs being eaten or succumbing to diseases, and it requires a lot of energy for the mother to incubate the eggs for a long time, so there is a strong selector pressure to speed up the process. Teeth take much longer to develop than beaks, while animals are growing inside the egg, and so this may be another reason that birds developed beaks. But also, our modern perception of birds is warped, because like many animals living today, all birds descended from only three or four lineages that managed to survive the mass extinction that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs, and then after that, evolved and diversified into all the major modern bird groups. None of the lineages that managed to survive the KPG extinction were species that had teeth, and many of the major groups of birds with teeth, like in Antiornithes, went extinct alongside the dinosaurs so a lot of modern birds fill niches that would have been filled by tooth birds before the extinction. And so, if the extinction didn't happen, may have survived until today. So a bird's beak definitely gives them advantages for their lifestyle, as they have evolved beaks on more than one occasion. But birds weren't necessarily all destined to have beaks, as some birds don't fly, and many egg-laying animals still have teeth. And so the toothed birds were actually very successful when they were alive, and like the dinosaurs, it took an asteroid to make them extinct. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.